Hey guys, my name is Dani and welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm gonna once again work on the Jaguar and I'm gonna be doing everything that I did in the front in the last video to the rear here in the back so let me just first undo these bolts and I'll open up the bootlet and I'll show you what my plan is okay guys so this is what the rear of the bootlet looks like at the moment and I need to now start fabricating those inner bulkheads that's going to separate the wheels from the inside the same as what I did there in the front and also I need to consider that there needs to come a fuel tank here on the top because in these cars the fuel tank was on the top and this specific kit did come with a fuel tank but it is way too big to fit over there I think that they might have intended on putting it at the bottom but I'm going to be putting it on top where it was on the original car. Mm -hmm. And then this rear lid area, the, the boot area needs to be covered up from, the, from this side. And I need to make it large enough so that I can fit a spare wheel in there. Because I don't know if I told you guys, but this boot was actually only a spot where the spare wheel was fitted. And I learned recently that this spare wheel was put there intentionally so that it would also serve as a rear impact bar for these cars so that was quite awesome so what i'm going to be doing now is i'm going to be removing these wheels for ease of access because unlike the front that where the wheels needed to be articulated so that i could make sure that nothing was rubbing i know that these wheels only go up and down so i'm going to remove them and i have better access when i start making these panels and then i'm going to start making the side panels it's going to separate the wheels and then i'll start making this cover on the inside and also keep in mind that this chassis looks a little bit different than the original car so the inside might look a little bit different than what it used to but no one's gonna ever know Okay guys, so I've now finished making these flat pieces that's, that forms the inside of this wheel well and the next thing I need to do is start closing up the inside of this boot by taking a piece of aluminium and shaping it so that it'll go up all the way to the underside of this flat piece and also conform to that shape so that it'll add some strength and structure to this flat part of the boot and then also considering that when this boot is closed it does not touch this chassis and another thing that I need to do is make a little bit of an extrusion over there um, so that the spare wheel will fit inside because it needs to go inside of that chassis area over there for everything to fit so let me do that quickly and then we'll take it from there
Alrighty guys, there we go. I've now finished making the inside of this bootlet and I also made this little protrusion where the spare wheel is going to go and everything clears the chassis perfectly so there's no interference from the chassis whatsoever. In actual fact I can put a rubber over here that will just help support where this spare wheel is going to go at a later stage. So that is all working perfectly and on the inside of this boot there is now a spot where I can at a later stage put a spare wheel or just put the bracket so that I can put a spare tie in there. So that is working out perfectly. Now guys the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to be cutting off this edge that I've rolled over and make it look the same way as I did with this front piece over here by taking a piece of angled aluminium and riveting it into position. And guys, in the last video when I was making this piece or that piece over there, I had the camera on time lapse and I just simply made the piece. But I've had some requests, people asking me how I bent this aluminium to take that shape. And I will gladly show you the method that I use. It is very rudimental and simple. But let's go to my workbench and I'll show you how I shape this aluminium to take that form. Ish. better okay guys i just want to quickly show you how i take this piece of aluminium and curve it or put a curvature into it with very very little tools basically all you're going to need is a hammer and a hard surface to hit on and something like a set of pliers what i use is this old tucking fork that i used for the rest of the work and the only reason why i use this is because the points are blunt it doesn't make any sharp edges on the aluminium and it's got some nice leverage to it but you can use a set of pliers and basically if you want this aluminium to curve in that direction you just start putting a lot of creases into this aluminium angle and you'll see quickly how this piece of straight aluminium starts taking a shape the more creases you put in there the more it starts bending over and guys you can immediately start seeing how this aluminium is starting to take a curve and if you've got, if you've got a profile or you've got something that you need to measure it against you can just put it next to that profile and you can see if it's going to start taking that shape now the next step is to get rid of all of these creases and I just use my ball pin hammer and a hard surface to work off and I start smashing down these creases from the front and I use the rest of this bend to give it the strength to keep it in its position whilst I start hitting it down and as soon as the front part is flat I can start working my way backwards and then the front part that is flat now will also assist in keeping this thing's shape but you got to remember that this curvature is gonna flare out a little bit when you start flattening it all down so you need to do it a couple of times but I'm gonna use the hammer and just hit down all of these spots and you're gonna see that this curve is a little bit straighter then and then I can once again start putting some more creases in there and bend it down a little bit until we get the desired curvature so like I said I start I start working from the front inwards and I just start hitting down these bumps just to show you what I'm talking about is that these creases in the front has now started becoming flattened out and it's still bumpy at the back but these bumps helps to keep it in its shape whilst I flatten everything out and once I'm happy with the front I can work my way into this corner and just start flattening everything out and you'll also see that this curve has now expanded a little bit so I need to once again put some more creases in there until I get the desired curvature and then I can flatten everything out and make it nice and smooth. 
So let me just quickly flatten out these perfectly and then I'm going to put some more creases in there and do this whole process again. Hey guys, so as you can see, this is the method that I use. Very crude, very rudimental, but it works. And I just flatten it out until it's nice and smooth after this. But now you can see it's starting to take a shape. This is only after the third time. And I do this quite a lot of times. And it's going to start taking the shape that I'm looking for. And the more creases I put in here, the more it's going to bend over. And the closer I put them together, the more even I can get this curve to be. And I can adjust it as much as I want. If I see that this radius is a little bit less than this radius, I just put a couple of creases in here, bend it over a little bit. And if you've gone too far, you can just put it down on a flat piece of surface and just bend it out a little bit. It's much easier to bend it out than it is to bend it in. But this is the process that I use and that's how I'm going to be making these pieces for the car. And I'm going to put that on time lapse because it's going to take a couple of minutes to do that. And we'll put it onto the car and see what it looks like. Let's go. Alrighty guys, there we go. I've now finished installing this front piece and it is so much tidier than it used to be. I'm just gonna continue riveting everything with the countersunk rivets, but I'm only gonna do that in the next video. And guys, 
this piece that I made over here is also very very strong and it adds a lot of support on this flat piece so that makes it much stronger and I also wanted to mention that when you work on this piece here it starts tempering the aluminium so it becomes very very strong also that also helps with a lot with um, making everything nice and rigid but guys I'm very happy with the results so far like I said over here it's nice and strong and also that line over there is becoming very very nice it's starting to really look good on this side also I just need to adjust it a little bit to get the lines perfect but guys this is going to be it for this video we have made a lot of progress once again and I hope I'll see you next week. Cheers!